It is September 12th, almost halfway through the month, guys. Um, a lot of exciting things going on. And I have some slides today, so hopefully that's cool. Um, that means I'm probably going to think I'm talking to myself a lot since I won't see as many of your faces like I am now. Um, but we're going to talk about one of the three vital behaviors. So let me start sharing my screen. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I think that this is like one of the things that everybody avoids. I know because I avoid it sometimes. So I wanted to kind of get on and talk about inviting very openly, very honestly, show you guys examples of what I do and how I do it. Um, because the reality is inviting is what builds your business. Inviting is the difference between not hitting success club and hitting success club. Inviting is the difference between rank advancing or not. Inviting is the difference between growing a huge paycheck or not. It literally is one of the four vital behaviors for a reason. And it is only scary if you make it scary. So I want us to kind of talk about, you know, being a pro at it and what does that look like? And all of you are capable of doing it because you know that everything in our business is teachable. So I'm going to kind of touch on that. But first, I wanted to do some announcements. And the cool thing is I made this slide last night before Amy hit Diamond because um, I don't know if you guys have uh, watched the movie The Secret. If you have it, you need to go on Hulu and get a free month and watch it this week because it's a little cuckoo, but it, it literally is so true. It talks a lot about kind of what you put out into the universe really does happen. Like little, little things, but also big things. Like, do you ever think about when you go to the mall and you're like, oh, I'm never gonna get the front parking spot like in the middle of the holiday season and then there's never any spots? Or like sometimes when you, I don't know, walk into the grocery store and you think like, oh, I know I'm gonna get the front of the line and you do. Like it's those weird little things. And so I made this side last night because I knew Amy was going to hit diamond. I knew she was going to lock me in today. And I'm just so proud of her. She's the coach who has done this the fastest on our team. So it's been just a little over six months um, and the third person to do it. So props to you, Amy. I know how hard you have worked for this. I know how much vulnerable posts you've put up to work for this. And I think it's proof to all of you guys that if she can do it, so can you. Um, it's not like it takes two years to do it. She's literally done it in six months. And all it takes is just a whole lot of belief and a whole lot of action. So um, congratulations. And we're so proud of you. And we can't wait to celebrate officially on Thursday. So that's when I will be publicly announcing it because um, paydays are when your qualification starts. And just for you guys to know, when you hit diamond, you have to hold all of those active coaches um, active for six weeks. So Amy has a nail lighting six weeks ahead of her to make sure that her downline has three active discount coaches on each leg and one emerald on each leg. Um, and I know she's going to rock it. So very exciting things. Secondly, if you haven't seen, I just posted the event in the team page. We're doing a live coaching sneak peek on Wednesday at 8.30. Basically what this is, is just a Facebook event and I'm going to need four to five volunteers to talk about one of the, each, each of the five topics. Um, we just do a live video every 10 minutes and each person speaks for like five to seven minutes. And you just kind of speak about, you know, what is a coach? How much time does it take to be a coach? Um, how do I share on social media? All of the five topics are at the top of the event photo. Um, so if you're interested in speaking, let me know. And this is a great way to add anybody who's interested in coaching. So even if that person has never messaged you back, but you think they'd be a great coach, just go on the event and send them an invite because you never know if they might pop on when they see live videos coming up in their newsfeed because the event is open, like it's not private. So the cool thing is with the live videos going is that it's gonna pop up in your friends' feeds and they're gonna be like, oh, you know, what is Amanda talking about this coaching thing? So it's something we've done twice now. It's been really successful. It's live so people can ask questions as you're talking and it can really be a conversation. 
Um, so get your people in there. This is how we build to diamond by getting people interested in the coaching opportunity. So don't hold back, go in the event and invite. The third announcement I have is the diamond dash kicks off September 19th and props to Amanda and York because they have been flying through their new coach training. And I just love seeing people take action and doing it. So you guys are rocking it. Um, to be eligible for the Diamond Dash, you have to be an Emerald coach. So you have to sign up two discount coaches and finish your new coach training. So they are well on their way to halfway getting there. And I know that Amanda's gonna work towards Emerald. So it's gonna be awesome. Um, and then the last one is, guys, hit success call by the 15th. Just get it done. Um, I know this has been kind of a slower month because we have the health bet at the beginning of the month instead of usually starting a challenge group in the third week of the month, but it's all mentality. You know, when you believe in yourself and like I said, when you put that juju out into the world that I'm hitting success club, people will come out of nowhere. Just put yourself out there on your social media, try new things, maybe give a giveaway for your next challenge group. Um, I'm going to be running another challenge group the 26th of September. So you can always advertise that as your next date and um, get people interested for that. So that's kind of my announcements. Did anybody else have any announcements they wanted to share? As I catch my breath. Go ahead, Amy, do you have one? Um, yeah, it's not, it's not really an announcement, but it's just a heads up um, for Amanda York. You're still on it, right? I can only see three people, little pictures. Oh, you can um, scroll down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, there's Shannon, too. Okay. Um, <laughs> so for me, like, it's just like a little snippet, but getting Kelly, the woman that I signed up today to hit, to get me to Diamond, I called her on the phone on Saturday, and I've never met her ever. She, I have one mutual friend who's my sister, who my sister and I are total opposites, and um, I talked to her on the phone for 40 minutes on Saturday, and she was like, holy shit, like, you're a badass. I love your attitude. Like, I don't even care. You know, send me, you know, send me the video, but I'm going to sign up. And I was like, okay, sounds good. She's like, you know, hearing your voice, it's so different than just like reading the text messages or reading the messages on Facebook. Like, it's so much more personal. You know, you can like really show how, how passionate you are about it. So if you haven't, um, you know, jumped onto the calling people bandwagon, do it. It's freaking awesome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure the 40 minutes is way better than three weeks going back and forth with somebody and then barely seeing their Facebook messages. Yep. She sent me messages like, we started talking months ago and then like she went, I, I think I shared it in Girl Boss, I'm not sure, but uh, she blocked me after I sent my first message. So word for the wise, don't give up on people. Um, she sent me a message and I went to reply and I couldn't because she had blocked me. Um, and then I kept getting messages saying, Oh my God, like I love, I just can't stop going back to your page. Like everything, you know, she's like on Saturday, she told me, she's like, I tried to stay away from you. I really did. She's like, and every time I went on Facebook, it was like, Holy shit, this woman is speaking to me. And so, you know, even if someone blocks you, keep posting. <laughs> so, you yep. know, you know who's watching. Yep. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. And we're so proud of you. I know there's going to be another diamond pop in soon or two or three. So watch out. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the meat of the call. Um, I kind of tried to make this fun because I know sometimes I'm halfway through the month. You guys are feeling like, ah, oh, you know, maybe you're not exactly where you want to be. And so I wanted to make this fun. So I want us to think of inviting like brushing our teeth. I hope that none of you skip brushing your teeth every day. That's maybe just the clean person in me, but you know, it's a daily behavior there for a reason because it, you're supposed to do it every day. And it's funny because I haven't done my invites yet today, so I have to do them after this call. But it's not about doing it when you feel like it or when you figured it all out. It's really just doing it with out thinking about it. I honestly think, and Amy Silverman talks a lot about this, thinking will kill you in this business. You know, overthinking, what is that person going to think of me? What are they going to think of this message? Is this too much? Is it not enough? You know, sometimes we just have to shut our noise off in our brain and just do. 
And that's so much of what the power hour is, right? It's just checking off your list and going through it and doing it and using your resources, you know, using a dry erase board or using an Excel sheet or using a business activity tracker on, you know, whatever program you're using. But it's kind of like you have to do it even when you don't feel like doing it. You know, it's like those nights you come home from being out late and you just want to crawl into your bed and not wash your face and not brush your teeth. But like, you know, you're going to feel gross if you don't. That's what inviting needs to be. You know, the nights that you go out or the nights that you spend friends or with family, um, the holidays are coming up. So that's going to be a big distraction. And you guys are going to have to figure out how to make inviting like brushing your teeth. And I want you to think about this analogy every time those invites come up. Did I brush my teeth today in my business? You know? So when you think about it like that, it's something that you just have to do, right? So let's move on to the next slide. Why the heck are you afraid of inviting, right? We all have fears. Shout them out. Who has a fear of inviting and why are you scared of it? Where's Lauren? I know she does. There you are. Yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest fear of inviting? I definitely have fears of inviting. Uh -oh. um, my biggest fear of inviting is that I will be judged, that people will reject me. Um, uh -oh. All right, we'll come back to her. Anyways, she kind of touched on one of the things I have up here um, is what others will think, you know, and I actually like to reverse mental reverse mentality, this reverse mindset, whatever the word is, reverse think how I'm thinking about this, that if I'm getting somebody who's hating on me spreading positivity on me posting my workouts on social media for my own accountability of me feeling healthy, healthier and happier, then they, it's a problem of them. It's not a problem of me because they, they are seeing somebody else succeed and seeing themselves not do that. And so they're going to hate on you. And I honestly like to think of it. I celebrate the people that show negativity or show hatred or whatever. And I don't like to say that you're going to get that. I hope none of you get that. But I honestly celebrate it because it means I am sharing enough of my story that people have something to say about it. Pretty cool, right? When you think about it that way, like I am sharing so much of what I'm doing and passionately that I'm changing lives, that I'm growing a team, that I'm doing something outside the box that's not like every other one of my friends in corporate America that they have something to say about it because number one, they probably want to do something like that, but they're not confident enough to or they're just like quite sure what I'm doing. And thanks Lauren, my biggest fear is that I will be judged. They will say no and they will think I'm stupid. Well guys, newsflash, people are gonna say no to you. Is the worst thing that you hear, no. And the reason I put the coffee cup, I'm sure you're kind of wondering what the heck is the coffee cup have to do with the fear of inviting. When you go to a restaurant for breakfast and the waitress asks you if you want coffee and you say no, is she offended? Does she take it negatively? Does she feel like the whole world is falling apart and she just can't talk to anybody the rest of the day because you said no to coffee? Heck no, she goes to every other table and offers them coffee too. That's how your business needs to be. It's not a personal no. Most likely no means not right now. Every single person I've signed up this month so far, I've been talking to for over six months. So if that doesn't tell you, like, no means not right now, they've all said no to me before. They've all bailed. They have one of the girls I've been talking to since February, and she literally, I've had her enrollment sitting there for three months, and she's bailed every other two weeks because she can't afford it. And she just decided, I kept following up, we kept talking, I invited her to the clean eating group, and she said, it's time for me to put myself first. She's a mom of three and was ready to do it. So no can't be negative in your mindset. No means not right now because 90% of the coaches sitting on this call have told me no and have ignored me and they will admit to that 110%. Amy said no to me for a year and now she's our newest diamond coach. Like you can't take no as a no. It's really just not right now. 
So you kind of just have to accept that you are the waitress handing out coffee. And if people say no, who cares? You move on to the next table and you just keep asking. Because for every hater out there, there's going to be 10 lovers. There's going to be 10 people watching you every day to see if you show up and see if you're positive and see if you're still doing it and see if you're going to follow through on what you said you were doing. You know, failure is the only path to success. Do you know how many times that I've failed in this business that I have gotten a message back from somebody like saying, stop messaging me. I don't want you, you to message me anymore. Or the, I'm trying to think of like someone's like people telling me that I should, you know, never talk about certain things on social media or share my body like that. Like failure is the only path to success because who's here two years later paying their rent, paying their car payment, paying their loans, not all those haters. So you guys are going to fail forward. You're going to do things that you're going to look back and laugh at. That's part of the way to success. Success is not a one way path. It's a winding, curving, bumpy ride up. But is it worth it? Heck yeah, it's worth it. Yes, Amy, it was Heidi. Um, she helped, she hit, helped me hit Success Club this month. Um, so you kind of just have to accept that no is part of the process and it's just another curve in the loop. It just means that person goes to your list for the next month and you still keep building the relationship. Don't you ever, when somebody says no, and I've been bad about this, just stop the conversation. You know, they say, oh, I, I'm not going to do the challenge group this month, but like, thanks for thinking of me. Don't leave the conversation at that. You always want to keep the conversation going. Hey, like, what did you do for Labor Day weekend? Do you have any fun trips coming up? Are you traveling any? You know, be a friend. Be somebody who's going to be there, that, not there for the commission, but there for the relationship. Because that's what our team is built on. That's why you guys show up every Monday night. It's not, you know, for the commissions and while those are nice, but it's a people business. And so you have to not be afraid of what you're doing because you're honestly giving a gift. Um, so be the waitress, offer the coffee out. All right, I need a sip of water. I had a getting started right call on here before and I was wondering if Kayla popped on. Who's that? Emily, hey, I think it is. Um, okay, fear. Fear will 100% hold you back in this business. It's something that if you are still having fears that you need to work on every single day, and there's a solution for that. Hello, personal development. Um, so think about this. What are some of the things that you guys worry about? Type them in the chat box. What do you worry about on a daily basis? What gives you anxiety? What is the one thing that you're scared about each day? Um, just throw them out there. Let's see. Judgment. Nice, Amy. And it doesn't have to be coaching related. It could be anything. Not having enough time. Awesome. So 99% of the things you guys worry about will never happen. Or, you know, they'll just be a bump in the road. You know, worrying about how much time you have. Well, we're, we all have the 24 hours in a day. We just choose what we do with those 24 hours. The best way to overcome your fear is personal development. And I wanted to share these little bubbles are six books that I would highly recommend. Um, and sorry, Emily, you may not be able to see these slides, but You Are a Badass is one of them. Um, Daring Greatly is another one. Go Pro is a great one. Go for no. If you're scared of hearing no, you need to read that book. It's like such an easy read. It's like 45, 50 pages um, bothering people in that hitting success club. And the funny thing is, Emily's hit success club every month since she started coaching, but yet we're still scared of it, you know? Um, failing Forward in the Slight Edge is one of my all time favorites. I go back and read that a lot because. It's really just about putting in the effort every day and showing up every day and building brick by brick by brick. And slowly but surely, you overcome those fears by fueling your brain with the good premium fuel, you know? Not just going on empty or fumes. You're really fueling your mindset so that when you get that message that's like, no, stop messaging me, who cares? Let it roll off your back. They're the ones missing out is how I think of it when I hear a no. They are the ones missing out on the gift because 
like I said, this team is a gift. You guys are building huge, tremendous things right now. Even if you just started, the small things become the big things because everybody else isn't hopping on a team call at Monday night at 8.30. You know, they're sitting on their couch watching Monday night football, which I'm sure you're probably wants to do right now, but he's plugging into the team call. And those little things is what allows you to overcome the fear to be a better, more stronger, confident person and to crush your messages, to not let no's, you know, fly off your back and just be accepted, but to find new ways to go about them. So I want you to think about the person you were before Beachbody because that's the person you're working with. So Shannon and I talked a lot about this this weekend because she gave me a lot of skepticism when she started. She asked me a lot of questions. Um, coaching wasn't on her radar. And it's funny to think because she is now talking about, you know, her future in the biggest possible way because of coaching. And guys, she barely even wanted to become a challenger. And now she has her spouse on this team. Those are the kind of people you're talking to. So did they answer you about coaching right away? Did they push away Shakeology? Were you flaky? Um, were you the person to never answer a message? Were you the person that secretly watched your coach but never liked anything? Those are the people that you're talking to. So you have to be so passionate and strong and confident in knowing that you have what they need um, and just knowing what you would tell your old self. You know, what would you tell them? Of course, you want to shout it from the rooftops. You, you need to coach, but you need to bring it back to their level and relate and use I feel, I felt, I found. That is a powerful tool right there. I know how you feel about Shakeology. I felt that it was the biggest waste of money. I felt that it was a total scam. I felt that, you know, it was going to be one of those other shake things. But what I actually found is I've saved money on groceries every month. I've been sick, for, sick free for two years, and I haven't had one allergy shot in 10 months. Boom. Drop the mic. You know, you need to find your I feel, I felt, I found when it comes to Shakeology, when it comes to workouts, when it comes to coaching, because that little acronym or whatever you want to call it, I'm really bad with my words tonight, um, is how you can relate to that person that you were. And so you need to never forget about that person. You know, maybe it's writing down a list of everything you thought about before you started becoming a challenger and before you started becoming a coach and pacing it up in your workspace because that's what's going to motivate you to make bomb posts and speak to the person that you were before starting this. That's what's going to motivate you to overcome objections in your conversations and not just stop at no. That's going to motivate you to just get out of your comfort zone and do bold things, do live videos, do workouts, whatever is scary to you. Thinking about that one person that you were and talking to them through your screen every day is so much more powerful than posting a perfect selfie or a perfect workout video or, you know, this glamorous, pretty picture. You want to talk to that person and think about how you can reach them. So next slide. Sorry, guys. All right. So we're going to talk about dating right now because I really think that when you're talking to people, and I'm getting to inviting here, so just bear with me. When you are talking to people, step one through five has got to be the first like 10 to 20 dates. And I kind of talked to York about this on his post um, about conversations today, is it's really easy as a new coach and even as a seasoned coach, when somebody has the little bit of interest in what you're doing and wants to join you, that you say, okay, well, it's $140 and here's everything you get and Shakeology is awesome and we're going to start you off. But you guys have to go through tons and tons of questions with potential people. And sometimes that means getting them on the phone and speeding up the process. Sometimes that means um, getting their email or their better form of communication like texting. I have so many people potential challengers on a text right now because I know that that's the way they answer and I ask them what's the best form of communication for them. It's kind of like a basketball game, right? You have to go back and forth. It's going between player to between player to between player. Most basketball games do not go off the one shot and shoot the three-pointer. 
there's a lot of back and forth between multiple teammates to make the shot happen. That's how your messages have to work. You have to go through the form process. You have to ask them about their family. You have to ask them about their occupation. That's a great way to understand, could they be a potential coach? Do they hate their job? You have to ask them about their hobbies and what they're doing on the weekends and you know what excites them about life. And don't rush the game because you're hungry for success points. Because guys, this is about changing people's lives. If you are doing the right thing by talking to people every day, and putting new feelers out there and adding new people to your network and sharing your journey on social media, it will come. So the biggest way to speed up the process is just to talk to more people, create more games for yourself, create more 5v5s and build them really strong. So if you're not hitting success club yet, maybe you just need to talk to more people each day. You know, maybe you just need to go a little bit higher, even if it's adding one person to your cate- each category. Um, you have to really date your messenger. This is my simple um, first message that I send to almost every single person that accepts my friend request because I've gone through almost all my friends now is just, hey lady, how are you? Happy fall or happy summer. I adjust it to the season. Um, can you believe it's already here? You know, something personable. Thanks for the friend request because I like to thank them for, you know, adding, make them feel special. I love your gorgeous whatever photos. I'll go through their page and kind of connect to something. They just went to a football game. I'll ask them about that. Um, They just had a wedding. I'll ask them where that was. Did they have to travel for it? Something that connects me to them because I'm not friending them unless I see something in them that I'd be friends with them in real life. So that's kind of your form and follow up in a nutshell, speed up. Um, You wrote in the chat. Okay, so next slide. So now we're getting to the invite. So you, this is warning note. You have to go through the five V5s. Lots of questions. What are you doing for work? Um, You know, what's your daily habits look like? Do you get to eat out a lot with friends? Those little things are little tidbits you guys can pick up to come in for the invite. If they tell you about their workouts, ask them what they're doing. Are they seeing the results they want? Um, You know, if they're cooking a lot, do they enjoy doing that with their spouse? That's an easy way to segue. A lot of people ask me, how do I transition from a follow-up to an invite? And it's really just going with my gut, I guess you could say, um, knowing that I've established the relationship enough to ask. Sometimes there's really no connection about health or fitness. I just have talked enough to them to feel comfortable to ask them. Um, Other times I've asked them like, you know, do you have, have any time for yourself outside of the daily grind. That's a great way to figure out if they're working out. Um, it's an easy thing without feeling like, do you work out every day? Cause some people get intimidated by that. Um, so these are kind of some common invites that I've used. They're straight from my Evernote. I was going to bring up my Evernote for you guys, which is a tool um, that is an app also. And basically I have copy pasted the conversation scripts document to my Evernote app and I have it on my phone so that when I'm doing messages, you know, sitting in my car in traffic or um, don't tell the Atlanta police that, but you know, like on those weird times in your day where you have downtime, maybe at lunch, I can throw some invites out by just copy pasting and personalizing to the person. I like to put people's name. Um, and obviously some of them have this, some of the some of them don't, but I like to put people's names so they know that this isn't a road in field script. I'm not writing out, you can, I'm looking to people to join my team and they win free cars. You know, I, if you guys haven't seen that script before from road in fields, like it's really bad. So I want to make it personable and I want to make it fun. I don't lead with a program. I usually like make it themed. So bikini boot camp, or right now we're doing the health bet. Um, I'll probably do like something like fit into those fall jeans, something fun like that. Like get creative with your group names and make it to your niche. Um, sorry, maybe York, you don't want to use bikini boot camp. <laughs> maybe in the winter. Um, but this is really just what I say. These are prime examples. If you guys want to screenshot them, obviously I will um, upload the team call so you can come back to these as well. But it's nothing that I haven't shared before. It's really not hard. And these are the things you need to send every day, but you have to be 
adding new people to your network to talk to. You have to be starting new conversations and you have to be following up with people before you can send the invite. So, you know, a lot of the questions that come after this is, you know, what's a challenge group or, you know, what's a coach? And we're going to get to that next. But the main thing about the invite here is making it your own. And so if this doesn't feel like you're saying this, then change it to what you would say. Um, speaking from the heart and really just being you. Don't talk like a robot. Don't copy paste the script and just send it. Copy paste the script and make it your own. Find new ways that work for you and then share it with the team because this is just what's worked for me. And maybe you guys can alter it and tweak, rinse and repeat and make it work for you and, and share those new examples. So those are just kind of three examples that have worked for me. Um, so this, these are kind of where people freeze up after you send the invite and it comes to life. People ask, what is a challenge group or does it cost money? And these are always the times where I'm like, to new coaches, oh, like, why'd you go there? But it takes time and I failed forward too. So this is a script I've used hundreds of times. What is a challenge group? I'm not going to write that out every single time somebody says, what is a challenge group? Because honestly, it's not worth it. Like I get it asked all the time if I'm inviting enough. So make your life simple. And for these common questions, find something that works for you in the way that you're going to explain a group, but it's got to be short. It's got to be sweet and to the point because you know, people's attention spans are like, this. I was listening to something today and they were talking about how we've like created this attention deficit disorder for ourselves because we're so overloaded and we have like so much information. So I think really keeping it short, sweet, and simple is key when you're having your conversations. Um, the other thing is when someone asks you, does it cost any money? You guys cannot, not, not go out and scream. It's $140. You can't. Thank you, Lauren. Acquired Attention Deficit Disorder. So you can't just throw out $140 because what do you know about them? You know, do you know anything about their health and fitness routine right now? You know, maybe you've asked them a lot about their family and their occupation and maybe like they go out on the weekends, but like you need to literally get into the trenches and dig about details. I'm talking about like, go look back to your conversation with your coach. I probably asked you guys, Tell me a meal by meal, what do you eat every day on average? I've probably asked you, um, you know, what does your daily workouts look like and how long have they taken and what's your biggest struggle with them? Um, I've probably asked you, like, do you feel low on energy? Do you feel like you're just like stretched thin? Those kind of things, you know, how much soda or coffee do you drink a day? That's how you bring in Shakeology. That's how you bring in a workout program at home. That's how you eliminate excuses. That gives you the ammo to come back when they have an objection. Do you see what I mean? But if you give the price right here, you've only done half your job. Because that's the, that's the rookie move to make. The pro move to make is to do the extra work and not get like so excited you just throw out the, the price because you're like, oh, they're going to do it, you know? Um, that's happened to me many times. And so I don't want you guys to do that again. It takes work to sign somebody up as a challenge pack. Sometimes people are like, I already know everything. Just sign me up, send me the form. Sometimes there's people like Shannon and Amy who are the toughies and I have to work through them, but you guys will too. And sometimes you have to work for it. All right. Is this helpful so far? We're doing good. You guys still with me? Okay. All right, so that's kind of challenge group invites. I wanted to talk about inviting to the coaching opportunity because I think this is something else that we avoid a lot. You guys may feel like I'm not a leader yet. You may feel like I just started this. How could I possibly invite somebody to be a coach? I don't know what I'm doing. You may feel like, um, you know, I don't have a team. I don't have resources like Danielle. You guys don't have to. It's already here in place. You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to have a team page to bring on and onboard new coaches. We have a system in place so that you can plug in your coaches and get them started. And then when you have coaches, I'm going to say, okay, now's the time for you to step outside with your success partner and start running your own stuff. And I'm going to push you outside your comfort zone. But we want to be inviting to the coaching opportunity just as much as we're inviting to the challenge groups. And I was talking to Shan Shannon about this this weekend, that she was feeling a lot of pressure inviting to the coaching opportunity. 
And I had been going through this in the past month or two as well, because I felt like I was just not getting many yeses to coaching. And Amanda has been such a blessing that she was like, oh, coaching? Sure. I want to inspire people and has jumped right in. Not everybody's like that. But the cool thing is, guys, your coaches, your best coaches come from your challenge groups. So all you have to focus on first is getting challengers and helping them see bomb results, helping them push through the struggles, helping them finish a program start to finish, helping them meal prep and go through a clean eating group, and then throwing the bomb coach invite week one or, you know, if they're really posting a lot, week one or two, when they're excited, when they're still engaged, that's when you get them. They're seeing results, they're feeling better, and you ask them, hey, why don't you hop on this Wine Wednesday call I'm doing? You know, there's no pressure. It's just an event on Facebook. I'd love for you to just listen in on what our team's doing and how it could work for you. So these are kind of some of the invites I use for the coaching opportunity. Um, something else that I do is I make a Facebook list of anybody and everybody I come across that I think would be awesome coach on our team. The reason being is that scrolling your newsfeed can take a tremendous amount of time and it's a huge distraction and really Facebook should be your place of business if you are serious about building this business so creating a list of people you can google how to do it um, allows you to just have people's posts that you're interested in either signing up for a challenge group or signing up to be a coach and so I can go love on their content and their posts and comment and ask them questions and therefore they will see more of my post and it just creates a relationship so that when I come in and throw the invite they've already seen what I'm doing they've already know you know what I'm doing they know that I'm seeing success they know that I'm growing a team and it's gonna be much easier for them to trust and know like I'm in it for honest reasons um, and it creates you know, a non-distraction for me during my power hour. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that if you guys haven't done that, it's a great way to just really hone in on the people that you want to help this month. Um, but really the live coaching sneak peek, I think has worked really well. Um, it allows you guys to step up as leaders and just kind of speak from your heart about the coaching opportunity, but it also allows people to get on and engage and ask questions as we go along. And I think it's really working well. Um, I'm open if you guys have any other ideas about inviting to the coaching opportunity. But the other thing is really just getting on the phone with the person and talking to them about it. Um, that's what I did with Brittany Hines. She is a coach starting this week. She got on the phone with them last week and she is starting out and excited about it. Sorry, my throat's like dying today. So don't be scared of the coaching invite. I think it really starts with getting some challengers under your belt and helping them see results. And then naturally the coaching invites will be easier to have because they already love the products. So why not offset your costs? You know, why not inspire other people to do what you're doing and, and see success? All right. We're almost at the end. So I think this is second to last slide. So you guys ask a lot, like, how do I know who to invite? You know, how do I know who to target? So I want to kind of give you like 10 quick tips on like who to talk to and how I kind of find people. So number one, if you haven't looked up the memory jogger from Beachbody, that's a great way to make your first hundred person list and start talking to three to five of those people off that list every single day. Um, it helps you kind of jog your memory from like, you know, elementary school friends or, you know, sleepaway camp or silly things like that, that you kind of just like forget about. Um, so look that up if you haven't done that. The second one is I really just talk to people that follow, like, and comment on my posts. So anybody that's liking or commenting on my stuff, you better believe they're going into a list on my Facebook. They're going on to my, um, list of people I want to sign up this month. If they're commenting and asking questions and stuff like that, and they're getting a message from me and just, I start the form process. Hey girl, how are you? You know, how's the fall going? Do you have any fun trips coming up? I loved your dog picture. Tell me more about him. Um, something that you can connect with. Number three is the list of dream team and future challengers and following up with them every single month. So every month when I have a challenge group going, I go back to all that list and I reinvite them all. 
and I reinvite them all and I reinvite them all because I know at some point, some months, something's going to happen. They're going to feel crappy about themselves and they need a change and they'll commit. Um, number four, and this is kind of like a secret stock thing that I do <laughs> is go on Pinterest and see what people are pinning. This is something that one of our um, previous coaches told me about. She was like the Pinterest queen and I always wrote it off, but literally it lets you in the mind of your friends. So like go add all your friends on Pinterest and when you don't know who to talk to, just like open your Pinterest page and see like, I cannot tell you how many people that never answer me posts like at home glute butt workouts. And I'm like, those cannot be working or they'll post like super clean recipes. And so you better believe I'm reaching out to them and talking to them that week. And sometimes they even say like, hey, not to be creepy, but like I saw your awesome clean recipe on Pinterest. Like, are you working on any goals for this month? I'd love some accountability. And you know, people always want some, some support. Number five, um, inviting to the coaching opportunity from your awesome challenge rock stars. You know, the people that are posting all the time, the people that are engaging and like friending people from their challenge group, you know, looking for those people that are showing up. I think our health vet group right now, and I don't know about you, Amy, everybody's posting because money's in the game. I wish I could make money in the game every single month. And I might have to like put giveaways back in because it's just incredible to see the consistency coming and I love it. So might have to bring back those prizes or something. Number six, never stop at the invite. And this is kind of what I mentioned before. Build that relationship. Commit to being their friend. Commit to having a relationship and not just in it for the challenge pack. Um, number seven, you never have, a, like eventually you run out of people to invite if you're not adding new people to your network and starting new conversations every day. So, 100% of the people I talk to and start new conversations with guys every day are people I don't know. So you just have to go to your mutual friends or your friends' pages and look at your mutual friends. If they have more than 20, 30 mutual friends with me, I'm friending them and I'm messaging them when they add me to their network. It's not creepy. It's not weird. It's only creepy if you make it so in your head. Um, find something you connect with them. Don't friend them unless you would really be their friend. You know, I look for like, a lot of Virginia Tech people, um, a lot of people that have dogs because I love animals or, you know, a lot of people that like to get outdoors and travel, that kind of thing. So think about what you like and find those people. Number eight is join interest groups outside of health and fitness. So I think Lauren's done this a little bit. Like she likes weird stuff. She's, she admits she's a weirdo and that's okay. You know, superheroes or um, I'm trying to think of like the other stuff sh she was posting about like Xbox or whatever. What do you play games or something? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad, but like those things outside of health and fitness, go find some groups on Facebook and plug into them. Video games. Sorry. I told you I was bad at words tonight. Um, so embrace, find those other people that are weird, just like you. I think Definitely focus on your warm market if you're a new coach. Focus on the people that are already on your Facebook page because those are the people that know you and trust you already. Um, but you are going to have to expand your network. You are going to have to reach out to people you don't know eventually. And you just have to get over that hump and accept that you have a gift to give. Um, number nine is find new things to be excited about. You know, connect to people in different ways. Whether that's running an event for your clean eating group, getting on the phone like Amy talked about, you can actually email, you can bulk email everybody in your downline once you start getting free leads and stuff. You can bulk email them on the Beachbody website. And obviously you don't need to worry about this until you hit Success Club and then you get leads the next month. But that's, so, that's how I signed up one of my challengers this month. Um, she was an old challenger and I got her re-engaged by sharing about the health bet. So a great way to check in with your customers. And number 10 is just making it non-negotiable. It's like brushing your teeth. Um, so put it in there and just do it. The last slide, eat that frog. If you haven't read this book, it's a really quick read again, about 30, 40 pages. And it's doing the thing that you like least first in your business. Um, basically when you think about it like this, not inviting every day is like saying no to your freedom. It's saying no to your success, hitting success club. It's saying no to rank advancing. It's saying no to your family's future. And it's saying no that like you're not building your business. So when you think about it that way, it's like, I got to invite, you know, I got to do it. Um, 
So hopefully that was kind of helpful. I wanted to open this up to see what other questions or concerns or things you guys are struggling with since we have about five to 10 minutes. And I know that was a lot of information um, and enough of me talking. So what else is like working, not working with you guys, inviting or um, holding you back? Was that helpful, not helpful? Can you hear me? Yeah. It was very helpful, by the way. That's great. Um, I have one question. For I think I struggle sometimes with finding new friends in terms of being efficient with that and not just like spending all this time scrolling their page. But then at the same time, like you said, not just clicking people you wouldn't necessarily also be friends with. Do you always go to your other person's and then hit their friends or do you use the find friends ever? I never use a find friends. I think it's okay. a waste of time. Okay. Um, the best way to do friend requests is on your phone. Mm -hmm. On your computer, not as fast. Um, literally, I go to the Facebook app. I scroll my feed for a hot second. I find somebody from Virginia Tech just because I know that's like a huge network for me. And then I go to their friends. Um, and I just look at how many mutual friends we have. And if they're their initial picture, their profile picture, just looks like somebody I'd be friends with. I click on their page. I like check the first two or three posts. If I see something that I connect with, I friend them. If I don't, I keep moving. So don't think it, think about it too much. Um, but I don't think that the, well, for me at least, the find friends just gives me random people and like people I have six friends in common with. I'm not gonna friend them, you know, I'm more likely to have somebody accept me if they have like 50 mutual friends with me, you know? Right. Yeah. Makes sense. And do that thing first. Eat that frog first if that's what's holding you back. Awesome. Else? York, you got anything? <clears throat> no, I'm still kind of learning as I go. So, um, I joined a couple guys, different groups. Uh, so I got into the fit group, the gentleman fit group, and also uh, joined in with uh, uh, Chris Conroy's. He's doing a uh, 100 blocks, like free kind of just goal group that I'm joining just to kind of meet some other guys. And he's got like 45 guys in there right now. So I'm doing that in the last like 100 days. So um, Chris Conroy? I think that's his name, yeah. Yeah, and, that's, that's the guy. I, I went on the cruise with him. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's really cool. He's been kind of following me and checking up on me, and I've been kind of following him, and he invited me to this group. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do some yeah. stuff and roll. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of – I've been filling my cup a lot. And, uh, Love it. Inviting – I should be inviting more, but I'm inviting a good bit. So. Awesome. Yeah. You're going to have to give us a sneak peek of the guys' group at some point. York, York yeah, Shannon. Shannon. I know. Shannon saw it. <laughs> awesome. For those of you it's guys, not as entertaining as <laughs> for, it's not as entertaining as ours, though. You said it's uh, it's just it's more about personal, like uh, personal growth as opposed to business. But I mean, that's it's a guys' group, so it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What else you guys got? I'll go. Okay. Um, I think for me, one of the things that I still struggle with is I 100% prefer to talk to people that I do not see every single day or I do not have the potential to like see walking down the street. Um, and so for me, my quote unquote like warm market, that's more so who I'm afraid to invite just because I'm like, okay, what if I see him at Wawa tomorrow and I'm posting like, don't go to Wawa, drink Shakeology, you know, save your money. And so I know I've been working through it, but I just wanted to share, like, it gets easier talking to people you don't know. Um, I think, like, the last four people that I've signed up as challengers, I, I literally do not know them at all. Um, one woman lives in, I don't even remember now, with, uh, uh, Washington State. Like, I just found her, she had a picture of her in a wedding dress as her profile pic, and I was like, oh. She recently got married, like, that's cool. And so for me, like, 
yes, the warm market is awesome when you're starting, but the cold market also is not as scary as you think. Like, it's a lot easier for me, to be honest, because if they don't talk to you, then, you know, you're not going to see them at Starbucks or at Wawa or, you know, at your high school reunion. <laughs> Love it. What else you got? Amanda, how's your first team call? It's good. I'm learning a lot, actually. The slides are really helpful. Cool. I was feeling in the, in the mood to make some because I hadn't done it in a while. Lauren, Emily, what else you guys got? I know you guys have something. I don't know where Lauren is. Looking at the ceiling. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I'm hiding in my car, actually, because <laughs> I'm still at my boyfriend's grandmom's house. But um, I thought the call was very helpful. And I think something that really stood out to me was, um, like, <laughs> kind of pretty much taking it one step at a time. Meaning I'm trying to, in my mind, I want to do giant leaps. And I'm like, okay, well, why can't I do that yet? Why can't I do that yet? Because I need, I need those challengers to, you know, get those great results and then I can, you know, work them in the coaching. So I think that part really stuck out to me. Um, and I completely agree with Amy um, with what she just said about, you know, who she t feels more comfortable talking to because I am working on this, but I still get a little annoyed when I reach out to people that I know and I know they've seen my text message or I know they've seen, you know, my message that I sent to them and they don't respond to me, but I know, but then they send me a Snapchat like five minutes later and I'm like, come on now, you guys are killing me. Um, so I think, you know, I'm working on that, but I think, you know, reaching out to people that I might not run into um, has worked better for me. Like the, I think my first month of coaching, I, I stuck with people that I already knew mm -hmm. and then I, I struggled with that, but I liked reaching out to people I didn't know. Just keep following up. The girl I just hit success club with today, she literally mm -hmm. is the horriblest, like, you know, those people just like never answer you or they're like answer you once and they'll be like, okay, I'm doing it right now. And they don't talk to you for like 10 days. And you're like, where have you been? You said you just wanted yeah. to sign up. Um, and she like randomly sent it to me today. And she's like, I just completed it. And then she's like, I had to delete my Facebook for a week because I have a stalker. I'm like, oh. There goes your participation in the clean eating group. Um, <laughs> so just stick with them. Oh, cool, Lauren. Lauren said, I'm on the iPad tonight because football is on, so the hubby gets the TV and computer for fantasy. Wow, two, two things. Okay. I'm working on forms because I'd rather talking to people I do know, which is why I tend to focus on building relationships so much in my conversations. Love it. Um, I think those relationships are so key. I think the thing to be careful with is also – not overdoing it to the point that you never invite somebody. So that's kind of like a fine line because you guys need, you guys have exciting things going on. You know, we have the team clean eating group going right now. We have the live coach sneak peek on Wednesday. Like I think that you can go just invite anybody you think would be an awesome coach, even though they've never been in a challenge group just to listen in on a coach sneak peek because it is so open and like informal. Um, Personally, like I said, most of my coaches have started out in a challenge group, seen results, and then want to coach. Amy and Claire are kind of the exception. They just wanted to coach day one. Um, it depends. It depends on you. You know, you are what you're going to attract. So you kind of just have to think about that when you're thinking of people. But the biggest thing is like just not forgetting to invite because it is one of the fourth vital behaviors. It is going to build your business. And, um, you know, when you skip it, it it's kind of like somebody said, when I don't invite, it's like I'm saying I'm not going to feed my children at night on the table. Like that's the paycheck that's going to buy me groceries. And I was like, wow, that's like, you know, really thinking about it, you know, I'm not going to skip it tonight. So, well, if you guys have anything else, anybody up for speaking on Wednesday? Anybody? Anybody? You know, Shannon said yes. Amy? All right. I'll post it in the team page and you guys can, uh, you guys can volunteer then, but 
hopefully we get a lot of people on. It'll be exciting. We're only going to be doing this once a month. Um, so make sure you know it's on the calendar for October if you are not ready to invite people and get a move in. All right, guys? Keep chugging. Keep doing. Success Club will come if you keep taking action. So don't get down. There's plenty of time left in the month to hustle. And uh, awesome, Amanda. You totally can. I'll post it in the team page and we'll coordinate. Okay, guys? Hope you have a wonderful night. And thanks for hopping on, guys. It means a lot. See ya.